Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to The Well, your source for the latest in the field of after school and summer learning programs. I'm here with Doreen from the Orange County Department of Education and she's going to be talking with us about her local school wellness policy. Hi Doreen, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Bruno? Good, good. So listen, I hear great things about local school wellness policy. What does the local school wellness policy mean to you? I'm really excited to be here to talk a little bit about the efforts that we're working on in Orange County. Um, I, I, I feel like having the, the wellness policy is a really great start to support schools in creating systems around wellness, something that's going to last beyond individual champions that we get, whether they're administrators or whether they're teachers. We, we want to kind of build a, a champion system around them so that if they go from one place to the next, that system is in place and, and our students get equity as far as um, their environment and as far as their chances of accessing healthy um, not just food, but also physical activity opportunities and just a healthy environment. We want that culture in all of our schools. So I'm really excited that the wellness policy allows for that, allows for that structure and a place for that to be approached in a way where it's consistent and it could be district wide and, and really, again, building that culture of health. So what is your role within the county office of education? So I am honored to be a manager of our health and wellness efforts here. So some of our work in, in includes health education, physical education, physical activity, um, the sexual health, comprehensive sexual health education, and of course, nutrition and, and physical activity and obesity prevention. So that's kind of the umbrella of our health and wellness services that we're able to support our districts in implementing. Nice. And do you have any examples of where the local school wellness policy has gone deep into the environmental you know changes level where you're seeing it in kids or in schools that you can say wow our work really does make a difference definitely i i i do see it our wellness policies have I feel like they're moving from just a document at the district level. We really have districts that have adopted um, the uh, wellness initiatives, have done safe routes to school uh, district-wide, have started a walking uh, school bus uh, every Wednesday. We have districts who have written into their LCAPs that they're going to hire PE teachers and have increased and, and improved the quality of their PE programming. We have individual schools who've taken on wellness as their school site initiative, nice. which has, has been impacted not just, the, not just the student and the families, but also staff and staff wellness. So kind of approaching it from a holistic perspective and that we're in this together. And I also am seeing that our community is really stepping up in regards to supporting and providing resources and influence and connecting to schools where schools have indicated where the, what their priorities are. Mm -hmm. So instead of us, instead of the community or even us bringing services to schools and saying, hey, we have this great program, you should do it. We're saying, hey, what does your wellness policy say? How can we support you to update your policy? How can we support you to assess your current school environment and, and have an action plan where you're seeing progress? Not about perfection, it's about right. progress. So how do we help you make those steps and make improvements? So whatever those improvements are, you're the ones that are deciding that. The school community, the students, the staff, the families, that's what they want. And then once you determine what your priorities are, then we're drawing on community resources and or drawing on folks who have maybe grant funds that want to step up and help with the implementation. So it's it's a, a really great support. And again, that really supports the sustainability of the efforts and not these just random one-time, uh, you know, programs that end and go away. And then, you know, what do our schools have left after right. that? It, it is about continuous quality improvement, right? And it is about yeah. the process. And so what, what do you see... Um, because I know that in a lot of on the ground, the work that is happening, there's usually a champion, whether it's the school principal or a teacher that takes this on. But what are you seeing out there um, in your region where this really takes hold and then it gets disseminated out to the rest of the staff or the culture of the school? Oh, that's a great question. I think because I get the perspective of the county and we work with so many different districts, I have seen it all. We have champion superintendents that make nutrition and physical activity a priority for the whole entire district. And then 
And doing that, they're creating this level. They're elevating wellness school and and district-wide and community-wide because of their high profile. I've also seen parents step up and write grants for school gardens, which is unbelievably amazing. And then they take leadership. And then with our support, they're building a a parent-led school garden committee. And that's fabulous to see. We have teachers who go above and beyond. They go above and beyond during their breaks. They go above and beyond before school, um, during school, after school, to lead kids in physical activity, to do cooking with them and to do healthy healthy recipes and to do uh, color runs instead of, yes. instead of you know, uh, selling cookie dough. When, instead of just a jogathon, we're going to elevate it and do color runs. You know, we've seen principals who have championed um, bringing services to their staff to get them excited about wellness for themselves. And then, therefore, bringing it to um, their their students. I've seen principals who have championed really bringing support to their families, recognizing that we want to support our parents so that they feel confident and they have the skills to to take this home, and not just that, but to also support wellness efforts on our school sites. I've seen um, front office staff who have been awesome champions to really support health celebrations and non-food rewards and communicating that with parents in a way to get them on board and not make them defensive. So it's really exciting to see it across the gamut and which is really great because anybody can be a champion. You don't have to be in a certain position and you don't have to have a certain status to be a champion. And anybody could really motivate a community. Um, and, And if we look at schools as the hub of the community, as the heart of health, if, if that's the case, then anybody could really help ignite that and and support that and sustain that. So that's been really exciting to see. That's really cool. And you're so passionate about it. Speaking about all these promising practices, it's really refreshing to hear that all of these things are happening in communities. So because you're so passionate, let me ask you this question. What would be your dream around the local school wellness Uh, policy in Orange County or in your community or in the schools that you serve? What what is it five years from now, 10 years from now when we're not – talking about just writing plans, but there's implementation of plans and it just becomes the culture of the community. What is your dream for a local school wellness policy? Oh my gosh. My dream for a local school wellness policy is is honestly for it to bring to life the whole school, whole community, whole child model. I really appreciate that model. I really appreciate that it's just, it kind of taking from the coordinated school health model and taking from the whole child um, approach and framework yes. and really elevating that and looking at not just the physical health, right? Yes, nutrition, physical activity, obesity prevention, you know, chronic disease prevention. We want healthy kids who feel good so that they can academically achieve. But that's one component. So let's look at the other components. Do we have comprehensive health education um, where, where it's skill-based and kids have the knowledge and the skills to practice those behaviors? Are we addressing social and emotional health and social and emotional learning? Is that prominent as well? Um, how are we how are we providing counseling services? How is family involvement a, a big consistent piece in providing wellness and really implementing the wellness mm-hmm. policy? Those 10 components are so key and if we really want to serve the whole child, if we really want to make sure that our kids, that health and learning are not looked at as separate, that they are looked at as integrated and not one for the sake of the other, but really one and both for the sake of the child and for the sake of that whole child and really supporting that. And I really appreciate the model has community and really stresses that for for us to be successful in the school setting in serving the whole child, we have to draw on the influence and the resources of the community. So what I would love to see is taking that wellness policy. So we have the wellness policy. There's also, you know, suicide prevention policy. There's so much work around social, emotional, and mental health, and especially with MTSS and all of these efforts, PBIS and restorative practices, restorative justice. We have a lot going on. My dream would be for, for us to have all of these efforts and not have them like to really break down the silos and to really demonstrate. I mean, it, I, it would be great to have like a wellness center at a nice. school site, yes. not just health services and nursing, not just counseling and, and mental health and not just, you know, physical health and have that really, uh, you know, support that is addressing all 10 components, something like that to really take that policy and have it be a practice that is integrated and, and that touches on every part that supports the health of the child, right? Not just yeah. health is not just the, the abstinence of disease. It's, it's 
having that physical, social, emotional um, support and, and, and health and well-being of the, of the child. So that's a really cool <laughs> dream. I we're going to work hard to make that happen. Right? So yes, which, there are a lot of efforts in progress. For yeah, sure. Which gets me to the last question for today is you and I met at the local school wellness policy collaborative here in California. Yes. So what has been your experience with the collaborative statewide? How long have you been part of the collaborative? And um, what, what are some things that you can recommend about the collaborative and other people joining the collaborative that you are getting out of it? Oh, so I, my experience with the collaborative is I have been really excited about the training and the technical assistance and the communication and, and just the work that the collaborative has been doing to support our school districts at the local level. Mm -hmm. And, um, which that's the reason why I wanted to be part of the collaborative. I wanted to provide input. I wanted to provide some support. And I really wanted to bring that local voice to the collaborative and say, hey, this has been great. This has really been a, a wonderful resource. Uh, we need a little bit more of this. And we would love a little bit more of that. Yeah. And to really help support that communication piece and taking such great minds and we have such amazing organizations that are dedicating staff time and resources to really supporting our districts and our schools. So I, I wanted to contribute to that and I wanted to be of service to communicate a little bit of what we're seeing at the local level, what we're struggling with, where our districts are, um, and to really reinforce that what the collaborative is doing is fulfilling the need. And it, it's something that is going to be consistently needed because districts vary in where they are and schools vary in where they um, need support. So I've, I've been so honored to be a part of the, the group and just excited that they're letting me be a part of the group and, and be able to participate and to, to kind of gain insight from them and to share a little bit um, uh, just based on our, our current efforts and efforts on the ground. So it's been a really great uh, support and I'm excited because I've been able to provide a little bit of insight um, in regards to the trainings that are coming up because I joined the training and technical assistance yes. domain. And I joined that because I wanted to bring this to Orange County. I wanted to bring uh, the, the collaborative and I wanted to bring all of the great trainings that they provide to Orange County. So I've been really excited that that's something that we'd be able to do in the upcoming year. Yeah. You great. Know, what's amazing to me is that you're so passionate and so talented and then we go into a room full of people that are just as gifted, just as talented, and they dream and they dream together and they dream big and to make this happen. So I'm always so thankful to be part of that collaborative. I'll definitely link the website here on the description below. Um, thank you so, so much for your time and sharing uh, with us your knowledge and your passion for this work. And we really appreciate what you're doing down in Orange County. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bruno. It's been a pleasure. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Thank you.